Well hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Cosmos Astro and part 4 of my observatory build. Woohoo! So as you can tell, I have been a little busy, it's starting to take shape. I've done a bit of work on the uh, walls, I won't be covering that in this video. However, what I am going to cover is how we've been put the, together the rolling roof here. It's not totally finished, a uh, few little finishing touches here and there, still needs to be waterproofed uh, but I will uh, cover that later on. Also going to include the construction of the rail system for the roof to roll off on and like I have done in all the other videos I am going to include the cost and so far because I do think it's quite important to sort of give people a sort of rough idea of how much something like this is going to cost and also yeah you guessed it the mistakes i've made along the way and i did make quite a few of them on this one like i have done in all the other observatory build videos i will leave links in the description for as many items uh, that i think are going to help anyone who's actually built themselves and also link to the observatory build playlist will be there so if you want to go check them out if you miss them you can do so enough of me waffling on let's get cracking so first of all, i'm going to address this post and in my last observatory video um I had a fix on this. Uh, I cocked up on one of the posts, cut the two short. It was a good fix. However, I did say I was going to change it, and I have done exactly that. Brand new post in, and both posts are concrete in now. Okay, moving up. So I'm going to cover the uh, rail system now. So to stitch this all together, I used a 150 millimeter long, 15 centimeter uh, timber construction screws, and they've got a similar coating to like. Um, yeah, your decking screws so the main valve doors got an eight millimeter hexagonal head and um, the pack didn't come with the bit to screw this in luckily i had one and i just used my impact driver here and just to uh, drive them in and now the reason i need them this long i need them to get through the uh, 90 mil uh, posts and i wanted to get a fair bit into the other post so that was the whole reason um for being that long and i think these are personally really really good screws i got them off amazon here's the box they're from timco and they really clamp the wood together and no pilot holes required either so yeah that's what i have used i was going to be using um uh, coach screws or coach bolts i didn't mention that in my last video but yeah once i saw these i thought yeah do you know what why not so i decided to go for some sort of uh a <laughs> design uh, if you like and i use some off cuts here so this this is an off cut for one of the beams and i've also got another one on the other side just behind this and uh, but i've sort of chamfered it all off just to make it look tidy if you like rather than just having sort of straight square edges so the way i fix this on uh, once the post was up um i fix this on with one uh screw so that come in the middle there it was poking up i sort of hammered it down and it just went over so it's sat flush and then to secure the top beam here, I then used two more screws, one on this side and one on the other side here. And that uh, secured that on. And then for the bit on the other side, I just used, as you can see, there's two um, screws holding that. Also for the cross beam, um, I secured them here, but I've also cut out some notches uh, at the top here to uh, just for the beam to slot in. And to secure the supports here, I used two screws at the bottom here and attach the post and another two at the top onto the beam so to secure the beam uh, closest to the observatory building i've used another two on each beam and basically just drive them into the side of the beam uh, to secure them on okay moving on to the rail that i've got attached to the top of the beam here so i got these from a place called the metal store here in the uk and I was recommended this by my good astro buddy Luke from Luke Homotico and I'm sure you most of you have heard of him so if you are watching Luke thank you very much mate uh, works a treat to be honest so these are two five metre lengths um, made from aluminium or aluminium if you live on the other side of the Atlantic and the way I've secured these on I have basically pre-drilled holes I countersunk the holes so when i put the screws in it was nice and flush to give them a nice smooth ride when the wheels are running over it before i move on i just want to highlight a uh, say a <laughs> major mistake that i made uh, when constructing this so when in my case anyway uh when putting these posts in it needs to be in line where your actual runners are going to be in my case is right on the edge of the observatory now i used a plumb line method bit string and I th thought 
thought that was straight. Uh, how wrong was that? <laughs> it was, in fact, it was about four or five centimetres out. Um, and it, in fact, I didn't even notice until this was all constructed. It wasn't until I put the actual uh, runner on and I saw it running clean off the beam uh, that I realised there was a major problem. So to rectify that, I had to, first of all, take this beam out, take the concrete out of one side, I hammered the, beam, uh, the post across, reconcrete it in, and I had to recut the beam because obviously it was too long. Uh, two hours of needless work, uh, to be honest. Uh, to be honest, I, I really can't understand how it happened, but it did. Very much a Homer Simpson oh, moment. Uh, but it's all now. Um, it's just something to look out for, I suppose. Uh, make sure everything is uh, straight before you go committing to things, especially when concrete's involved. So the other thing I sort of screwed up, well, I think I screwed up, it wouldn't surprise me, but, you know, nevertheless, whether it was me screwing up or it was the, just the wood in general, um, there was a, a hump sort of here, and when I was running the roof off, it was sort of wanting to do that. Um, so I took the support back out, and it seemed to drop, and then I dropped the roof on, and it flattened it out. So at that point, I decided to put the support back in, and it seems to be okay now. Uh, I have found wood likes to do its own weird and wonderful stuff. Uh, you've got to work with it after time rather than against it. All right, finally inside the observatory, and I'm going to start off with probably quite an important feature of the observatory, since it seems though it sort of rolls on and off, is the wheels I've used, or casters. So in total, I've used eight casters, four on each side, and uh, the total height of each caster is 98.5 millimetres. The wheel diameter is 75 millimetres and a total weight capacity um, of each one is 60 kilograms. So I think sufficient enough. Um, that's why I nearly fell over there. Um, has like a sort of rubberized hardened wheel and seems quite smooth when I'm running it on and off. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite happy with them. I got them from a very well-known DIY store in the UK, uh, B&Q. So to fix these on, I basically just used 40mm Deccan screws again. And yeah, seem to be fine. Four on each caster. So I've gone for a flat roof design. Uh, there is a slight slope on it, I think about uh, four degrees. <laughs> Probably not the textbook way of constructing a, a roof line. Um, but it's my way. And uh, it seems to be strong enough. It hasn't fallen apart yet. Maybe ask me that in a year's time. Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> For the majority of the framework, I've used 4B2 C24 treated timber. I've still got a few more bits to do. I uh, want to put some uh, noggins in. I've already got a few in already. I want to put a few more in. Uh, so the cutters are attached to two lengths either side. Uh, and then attached below these lengths of to the front and the rear, I've run another couple of links to create that uh, box. And then what I've done is to get the elevation, I've, as you can see, I've laid one end of the timber on top and I've sort of cut in a little notch so it sits in. And then that runs up to the other end. As you see, I've put another bit in here, just to give you that elevation. And again, I've, I've run supports just to mirror that all the way along. And underneath here, I've uh, just to sort of bulk it out a bit, uh, give the uh, ply something to sit on, because this was um, uh, all hollow. I uh, use the same timber as what I've done with the framing, uh, which is one and a half by two and a half. Um, treated timber. I've also put some little supports on the sides and yeah it seems to be holding fine. So for the top of the roof or the roof covering or whatever you want to call it I'm sure you all know what I'm going on about. I've got an off cut here. I've used 18mm hardwood ply. Really good strong sturdy stuff this. Uh, now it does still need to be trimmed off around the edges uh, but I'm not going to do that until um, just before I get the roofing material and all the trim for that ready to go on. It is slightly overhanging more than what I want. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's when I'll do that. 
Now as for the fascia or the sides of the roof line, uh, I have used 9mm thick hardwood ply uh, as a backing wood and then I've placed cladding on top of that. Um, I have made a few mistakes on that, uh, I'm not entirely happy with it, uh, no, nothing major wrong with what I've done, but like I said I do want to change it and I will cover how I'm going to put that together in the next observatory build video I think. On the uh, entrance end here I've got a couple of bits of timber just here, uh, either side and that, they're acting as stoppers uh, so when the roof rolls off it'll stop. I will be fitting at some stage uh, some ventilation. I've got uh, one of my ventilation strips here. I'm going to be fitting two uh, for the time being. It has like bug mesh on the back. I got these from B&Q as well. Now they're going to be basically fitting in these areas here uh, in the centre. Um, I'm not going to fit them until probably when I've put the roofing material and all the trimming on and that'll dictate how low I can actually under it because if I put in there and I've, I've gone too high um, it'll mess the job up. I have got the option to do another two if it needs further ventilation so if, if that is the case I'll just cut in um, either side and fit another two. So this is quite easy to open. Uh, I mean I've got no handle on it so it is a little awkward at the moment but once you give it a nudge open and get behind it uh, it is really smooth. We'll push it all the way yet. And there, it's hit the stoppers. And I have to say, there's something quite um, satisfying about that, to be fair. But uh, what I'll do, take you over to the other side and uh, show you what else I've done. Just uh, close this up. We'll close it all the way. I'll just stop so I can show you. You can see, uh, here's the recess and uh, Side the observe, uh, roof here, so if I just close it, there, just hit in, hit this bit here. Uh, so, if you can imagine, I'll just use this off cut. Imagine this is part of the frame, and you know, and the uh, cladding would be over that all the way down. Uh, this, I mean, I, th I think it's going to need some more trimming. Um, but if you imagine that would actually overlap and this is how it's going to work and just slide on the side of the frame here I'll just open up you can see there slide on the side there that should give it a nice tidy finish and also give it a good weather seal I'll probably put some maybe weather brushes around the edges as well but we'll see how it goes that's the idea, I hope that made sense. <laughs> so that part of the build's gonna actually come after I've actually put the roofing material on. Um, it's gonna be overlapping slightly. So I'm not entirely sure where, you know, how much room I'm gonna need. So it would make sense to do that at the very end. Uh, so at least I'm not gonna be hitting anything and I can measure it a bit more accurately as well. So yeah, that's where we're at. Well, much later on in the day, I'm uh, all freshened up, I'm quite literally in my PJs, um, I'm ready for bed, exhausted. I've seen me pumping all my effort and energy um, into this build at the moment. I really need to get it done and dust, well, at least watertight, um, before the winter hits in. So, I've got my book of numbers here, uh, let's dive in. So, the cost of this part of the build was in the region of £520, which brings the current cost of the build in the region of a grand and a half which is about 1740 odd us dollars in this current exchange rate now, of course that is a guide you know wherever you are on the planet or even this country for that matter different materials are going to be available different prices um so you know take that with a pinch of salt um the runners i just want to single them out actually they were 50 pound each uh for the a five meter length so that was 100 pound um you should have saw the size of the tube that come in obviously five meters quite lengthy um and i thought it was a good buy actually uh, so thanks again luke for pointing out that. i think he used them on his observatory build to be fair uh so the 
next video i'm looking at sharing i've been comparing price like custom builds and stuff and um, compared to what i've been doing and i'm going to share that i think you might find that quite interesting and um, also hopefully get this like i said watertight or, or relatively put the bed uh, so that'll be the skin cladding you've already seen part of it in this video where i've uh, got the felt on there uh, the roofing material, um, finishing touches, hopefully a door, and also a redesign of the front. That all will be revealed in due course. So, hopefully this has helped in any way, and you've took some of it away with you if you are building yourself. Hopefully you don't make the same mistakes I'm making. Um, no doubt I'll make some more in the next part of this uh, build. And hope you've all enjoyed the video. Look forward to hearing from you. And on that note, take care everyone, clear skies, and of course, until next time, bye for now. It's a bit of a tight uh, gap, but I did leave enough room to work uh, on this. So if I ever needed to get a shift key on with this build, it is definitely now. Moving on to the redesign of the front here.